So, Arrow got good and the Flash got bad. I guess we're on Earth 2 now. Or Earth 3. Or Earth 19 or whatever. So yeah, the Flash Season 3. Not great. I mean, it's not like the quality of the show went completely downhill, but it just kept spinning its wheels. And in many ways, being boring is much worse than being out and out laughable. And believe me, it was boring. I should know, because I watched all 23 episodes and I kept waiting for something to happen. So, where to begin? Well, I guess we can start where the season started, with Flashpoint. Remember at the end of season 2, where it ended on the promise of one of the most iconic Flash stories of all time? The possibilities were endless, the alternate versions of characters we could see were intriguing, and even if the story wasn't gonna last the whole season, surely it would be a fascinating story to explore. It lasted one episode. Yeah. How flashpointy is this season going to be for the producers? I mean, look, you know, we obviously, uh, you know, try to, uh... Well, th that was a waste, which is a recurring theme this season. I mean, they easily could have gotten, at most, half a season out of Flashpoint, and they probably should have. We got two episodes of Earth 2 last season, and we only get one for Flashpoint? Really? Barry just immediately undoes it, which made the season 2 finale feel much less impactful. Characters keep saying that everything happens because of Flashpoint, but we didn't have any time to connect with that world, so that statement doesn't really mean anything to us. I will admit though, Flashpoint was a pretty brilliant plot device for the writers to use. Anytime there's an inconsistency or a plot hole, they can just say, Flashpoint did it. So, after that disappointment, we experienced a totally new, original story. A mysterious, evil speedster shows up and wants to kill Barry, while claiming that he's truly the fastest man alive. Because we've never seen that before. Are the writers just not aware of the fact that they've told the same story three times? and that they're getting progressively worse at telling it. The problem really lies with the villain, because Season 1 had an amazing villain with Reverse Flash, and while Zoom was pretty much just a retread, he was still intimidating and powerful in his own right. And in Season 3, we have Savitar, who is the very definition of style over substance. His design is cool, and it was interesting to have such a huge, imposing, seemingly invincible speedster facing off against Barry. They even tried to one-up Zoom's intro by showing off just how ridiculously fast Savitar is, and it's so overblown that he has to be nerfed for the rest of the season for any fight to be believable. Based on this scene, Savitar could easily kill everyone in less than a second, but he doesn't because... Look, the effects aren't the problem with Savitar, the execution is. Savitar is boring, except for that introductory scene, he doesn't do anything on that scale again, and he barely does anything at all. What made it worse is that they stretched out the revelation of Savitar's identity for so long. And they just keep teasing it, like this guy from the future shows up who knows who Savitar is, but he doesn't tell them, and then Barry goes forward, and future Barry won't tell them, and then the suit opens up in front of Killer Frost, and they just won't tell you who Savitar is. At this point, I was far more annoyed than I ever was intrigued. I just wanted them to reveal it and move on. And Savitar turned out to be the first thing that anyone thought. Really, it was only a matter of time before the main villain turned out to be an alternate version of Barry, and since they wasted that opportunity with Zoom, we get it here. The explanation of Savitar's existence ends up being so convoluted because they can't just say, uh, he's Barry from Earth-12 or something. No, the writers wanted to do something clever. And I'll be honest, I just don't understand it. I don't understand how this perfect time loop works, I don't understand how a time remnant created to fight Savitar becomes Savitar, and I don't understand how the Speed Force prison works. I've sat down and drawn diagrams of timelines trying to piece together where Savitar was initially, when his creation was, when he traveled through Which time, when he was trapped, seeing, why Savitar didn't freed, just kill Barry if he doesn't of need Savitar him, how existed, many timelines why Barry can undo when he his existence. Iris. Maybe you understand and good for you, but every time I try to figure it out, I find a contradiction that makes me even more confused about the whole thing. I feel like there's one element I'm missing, and despite all of the explanations I've read online, I still can't piece it together. But those online explanations shouldn't matter, because the fact that what the show itself presented as an explanation only made me more confused, 
That's a failure on the show's part. I shouldn't have to do homework to understand how the main villain can even exist. I guess The Flash has thrown around so much nonsensical science at this point that it doesn't really matter. The show says it makes sense and it's easier to just go with it. See, that's the thing about time travel, Barry. The more you do it, the less the rules apply to you. So basically, don't think about it. It doesn't matter. Logic doesn't matter. The rules don't matter. They also never explain where this magical suit of armor comes from, or how Savitar can give people hallucinations, or how those hallucinations can attack people, or what happened to his face. The more you do it, the less the rules apply to you. Right, sorry, logic doesn't matter, gotta keep that in mind. Flashpoint, that's the only explanation you need. So, in the spirit of logic not mattering, let's talk about the rest of the season's story. Well, not a whole lot happens, to be honest. After Flashpoint was resolved, Dr. Alchemy causes trouble for a bit, then Savitar is revealed, and Barry is sent forward into the future by accident where he sees Savitar killing Iris. I personally don't understand why this is such a big deal, because Iris dying is all I really want. So, the rest of the season is devoted to Team Flash finding a way to prevent Iris' death by trying to change the events that will lead up to that point in the future. And while that is an interesting idea, in theory, it really doesn't leave much story to tell. Did anyone really believe that Iris was going to die for good? I didn't. I knew they would find a solution, and I knew it would come at the very last minute. And lo and behold, even though Team Flash does everything they can to change the future, the exact set of circumstances end up occurring, only things don't happen quite the way they seem to. Ooh, you really tricked me! It's not really a mystery when you've been shown the exact outcome already, and that outcome is clearly not going to actually happen, and the story has to be stretched out so far because they can't really pay off that final twist until the finale. It's just so slow and meandering, and the whole future aspect of the story doesn't even work as a theme. Reverse Flash was a threat from Barry's past, Zoom was very much a threat of the present, so the future seems to be the logical next step. And seeing how characters are in the future is certainly an interesting idea, and one that this show is uniquely able to explore. But there's a bit of a disconnect with the future, because characters don't really grow and change as a result of what happens in the future. What happens in their past? Absolutely. What's happening to them right now? Definitely changes people. But what happens to them in the future? It just doesn't work as well. And when Barry goes forward in time, everything is so tragic and sad, so we know things aren't going to end up like that. There's no real weight to saying, this is how things will turn out when we know that something different will happen. So all we can do is sit back and wait to see how things will change at the very last minute. But this doesn't create tension, it's just boring. Because everyone goes on and on about how important it is to prevent a future that we know won't really come to pass. You know what? would have been a really bold move? Committing to killing Iris at the end of the season. I would have applauded the writers for choosing that far more unpredictable option. But instead, we were stuck with predictable boring, and predictable. Another aspect of the season that took away tension is the fact that pretty much every member of the main cast has superpowers now. In season one, everyone had to rely on Barry, but now Wally West is Kid Flash, Jesse Wells is also a speedster, Cisco has the power to open portals and see through dimensions, and Caitlin has her cold powers. With so many characters running around with powers, it's hard to feel like there's any danger. We've seen what Barry can do on his own, so shouldn't him, Wally, and Jesse be able to clean up all crime in a few hours? Well, that would make sense, but super speed just kind of operates however each scene needs it to. Sometimes Barry can run so fast that he can tear a hole in the fabric of space and time, and sometimes he can't even move fast enough to dodge getting stabbed in the leg. Maybe Flashpoint makes that happen, or bad writing. On top of all that, I don't even understand how Caitlyn's powers work. Okay, I understand the ice part, but why do the powers make her evil? Why do they make her develop the Killer Frost personality? She was evil on Earth too, yeah, but does that mean that her powers make her evil in every conceivable reality? If they just said that it was affecting her mental state, that would be fine, but she turns into a mustache-twirling villain who throws around one-liners. And just like with Iris's death, it was obvious that they were setting her up for a last minute switcheroo, and they did. I'm not Caitlyn anymore. You're not Kella Frost. No, I'm not. I'm something else. I am the Green Arrow. 
But the biggest flaw of the show at this point is that Barry is just a terrible protagonist. The whole season is built off of his mistakes, and since that's all we focus on, he just seems like an irresponsible idiot. I know what they were going for, making him face the consequences of his actions with time travel, but it makes him seem so incompetent. We don't need such a prolonged deconstruction of his character. That works on Arrow because of the different tone and different story. It doesn't work here. Barry was sucked into the physical embodiment of the Speed Force, which warned him about abusing his powers, and he still went around and rewrote the timeline twice. And he was going to do it again, but Jay Garrick stopped him. I'm not even siding with Barry anymore. If he dies, at least I know everyone else will be safe. The timeline will be left alone. When they revealed that Barry was the villain, I wasn't surprised. He's caused more damage than any of his enemies. Now who's the villain, Flash? The time traveling mass murderer is right. Boy, that's a glitch in the universe. I guess we should talk about character drama too, since that's about 75% of the show. This is the CW, after all. There weren't really any notable or interesting developments this season outside of people getting powers. Everyone's in a relationship now. You've got Barry and Iris, Joe and Cecile, Caitlin and Julian, Cisco and Gypsy, Wally and Jesse, HR and Tracy. Since the episodes began to feel so formulaic this season, all of these relationships might as well have been set up just so every episode would have a different B story. Every time an episode would cut away from the main story, two characters would meet somewhere in some room and talk about some some emotional issue between them. These discussions would either end positively and affect the characters in no way or end negatively and they would be resolved in the next episode. By about the fifth time that Julian and Caitlin started talking about their feelings in a hallway, I just wanted Julian to do what all Caitlin's love interests do and die. And I'll be honest, the Barry and Iris relationship is still weird to me because they're basically adopted siblings. What? You don't want to kiss me? Of course I want to kiss you, but not in front of him. What does that matter? He's your... He, our... He, Joe, he... I know they're technically not, but if I was making out with a girl and I could conceivably call her dad our dad, I'd cut that out real quick. The writers knew that Barry and Iris were gonna end up together, right? If they didn't want that familial aspect to be a part of their relationship, they shouldn't have written it that way. Iris having this ticking clock on her life was interesting, but they only played it for melodrama that didn't even make sense. Barry proposes to her, but then she realizes that he only proposed because she's going to die, so she refuses, and that makes sense. And then, a few episodes later, Barry proposes again, with seemingly no change in his motivation for doing so, and she accepts, because it's the CW. So yeah, overall, the whole season was just kind of meh, but there were some high points. I really enjoyed the two-part episodes that involved Grodd and Gorilla City. The effects looked incredible there. It was great to see Wentworth Miller come back for that one episode. His extreme overacting is always very much enjoyed. The costume designs were great, with the notable exception of the rival, who... I don't even know what to say about that. And, as always, Tom Cavanaugh is a shining light of pure brilliance. This guy has played multiple different versions of the same character, and every one of them feels so distinct and different. So yeah, that's about all there is to say about The Flash Season 3. Oh wait, the finale! This finale is Arrow Season 3 finale, levels of bad. I thought the Season 2 finale was a letdown, but... Wow. Let's just break it down scene by scene. So it turned out that Savitar didn't kill Iris, but instead killed HR, thanks to some clumsily foreshadowed tech. Because Savitar and Killer Frost are such massive idiots, HR managed to switch places with Iris, who can somehow survive this. <laughs> And while Iris' death was treated as this enormous tragedy that had to be prevented at all costs, nobody seemed to care when HR died. Seriously, they all move on in like five seconds. Tracy is the only one who cares, and that's based on a two-week relationship. Nobody even cries at his funeral, and another Harrison Wells just shows up and takes his place. How dare you? He got you all coffee. He was a ray of hope. Hashtag justice for HR. Oh yeah, and Julian found a cure for Caitlyn's Killer Frost personality. I guess it rewrites her evil DNA or something. I... 
who cares? Savitar then realizes that he didn't kill Iris, and since that was the event that created Savitar in the first place, there's now a paradox. Savitar now has limited time until the paradox kills him, so he has to put his plan of becoming a god into action immediately. Why does the paradox not just kill him instantly, like, you know, that other paradox? Empty dramatic tension, that's why. So then, Barry decides that this whole stopping Savitar thing is overrated. Instead, he meets up with him and tries to turn Savitar to his side. Even though Savitar just killed one of his closest friends, you know, that thing they were trying to stop Savitar from doing. It was just a Wells. We'll get him a new one. And I know that conversations in the hallways of Star Labs always end well for these guys, but it seems like the main villain should just be stopped. Watching these scenes just makes me realize how interesting it would have been to see these two versions of Barry interact for more than three episodes. And what a massive wasted opportunity it was. So, shock of all shocks, Savitar turns out to still be evil, so this non-sequitur subplot ends and he tries to kill them all. Come on, can one superhero thing not do the blue sky portal? Just one. Actually, every Flash finale has a sky portal. And a villain who disintegrates. The writers really don't try, do they? So Savitar goes to complete his plan and become a god, but the Black Flash arrives to stop him. Now, this character was established at the end of Season 2, and has shown up in Legends of Tomorrow and for one episode in Season 3, and it's essentially the embodiment of death. The Black Flash was an unstoppable entity created by the Speed Force with the sole purpose of killing speedsters who mess with time. Surely, this is going to be an epic battle. <laughs> What? What? The one thing Black Flash can't fight, cold. I... That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. How was she even able to shoot ice that fast? It was moving at super speed. So after a decent final fight scene, Barry finds a way to weaken Savitar. <laughs> what? Why are the lights red? How does it feel? So close to your Why isn't Barry's voice different? Savitar's voice is different. I must become immortal before the paradox reaches me. Was Savitar just doing that silly voice this whole time? I guess Barry can just do a really good jigsaw impression. So Barry defeats Savitar but chooses not to kill him because that's his whole thing. And just as Savitar goes in for a final attempt at killing Barry, he's shot in the back. Wait, what? Iris shot him in the back. I mean, I get the irony there, but really? That's how you defeat the most powerful speedster in the multiverse? With a gun. Don't speedsters move faster than bullets? How did Iris even get there? And why did she have a gun? What did she hope to accomplish here? How was she able to aim so quickly and accurately when Savitar was moving at super speed? Barry Allen was killed by a gun. What even is this show? What an anticlimactic ending. Well, since Savitar disintegrates, I guess they don't have to bury Alan. <laughs> Anyway, since Jay Garrett got freed from the Speed Force prison that Barry created for Savitar, and I won't even try to explain that because I don't know how it works, the prison needs an occupant and Barry decides to go in himself. So yeah, the season ends on the most empty cliffhanger possible. I'm sure that Barry is really trapped in the Speed Force with no way out. I'm sure that he won't find a way to resolve things in the season 4 premiere. If Barry's in there for more than three episodes, I will be shocked beyond all belief. Also, I can guarantee that Iris will be dating someone else when Barry is freed, because CW. So, after 22 episodes of boring, meandering inaction, we end on one of the most nonsensical and outright infuriating episodes in the entire show. Great. Season 3 just felt like it stagnated so quickly, and maybe if there was a bit more forward momentum, the season as a whole would have been more enjoyable. I guess you could say the season needed to move a little faster. The only thing worse than the finale was that musical crossover episode. I mean, sure, The Flash has had plenty of cringy moments in the past, but it's rare that you get 40 straight minutes of cringe. It's impressive. It's just this dumb, fluffy little waste of time just when the season story should be ramping up towards the climax. The only good thing about it is seeing Darren Chris because 
Darren Chris is great. I'm your super friend. Rachel Bloom from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend reached out to us and said she would love to contribute a song. Oh wow, Rachel Bloom, the person behind the worst thing to ever happen to music. Cause my sex junk is so oh, 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 much more than either. Oh, oh, oh. Ugh, the musical crossover. What a waste of time and effort. What a waste of oxygen. If you're ever broke, I've got the cash on my couch. You're welcome to crash. And if you ever need a hand, I'll be there in a flash. Barry. There was also episode 21 where they did the whole memory loss storyline and then they just restored Barry's memories by the end of the episode. I remember. I remember. I remember everything. I remember everything. Wow, that certainly had a point. And then, of course, you have the crowning achievement of nonsense science with this line. The Philosopher's Stone is made of calcified speed force energy. That, quite literally, means nothing. How do you calcify speed fo Never mind. So, with such a disappointing season now over, what can The Flash do to improve in season four? Well, number one change, no more speedster villains. Barry fighting someone who's faster than him, and then Barry figures out how to be faster, and then he beats them, and then the villain disintegrates. That's old now. They've set up Clifford DeVoe, aka The Thinker, as the main antagonist for season four, and he's a very different kind of villain than we've seen before, so that's a good sign. Switch up the formula, try something new. And speaking of trying something new, try to find a different resolution for weekly villains than a character telling Barry to run fast. Seriously, it's just ridiculous at this point. Almost every episode's conflict is resolved by Barry saying, I don't know what to do, and Iris or Sisko saying, you have to believe in yourself, run. Barry's whole thing is running, how has he not figured this out yet? I thought Barry was supposed to be smart, remember when he was like a forensics genius? Why has he never done this Sherlock Holmes stuff like in the pilot ever again? Wait a a minute. Savitar was Barry, and Savitar was an idiot. Yeah, it checks out. Barry's an idiot. I guess you don't have to try too hard when you're facing off with villains like Magenta. Above all else, what I want the show to do next season is to take its time. Don't bring Barry back right away. Let us have some time with the other characters. Don't rush into bringing in DeVoe and trying to make some big, complex plan for him. If this season showed us anything, it's that convoluted doesn't equal smart. And can we please get Barry a new suit? We got to see a future version of the suit when Barry went forward in time, and it looks so much better. Everyone has a better costume than Barry, except for this guy. Just give him an upgrade. The Flash Season 3 was just like The Flash's suit. Bland and uninteresting, and it's a real shame because I loved this show in the beginning. Hopefully The Flash can find its footing again in Season 4, and even if the show will never make complete sense, I hope it can make a bit more sense than Savitar did. I still don't get it. I just don't. I guess you could say, The Flash Season 3 really... sucked. Okay, I could have tried harder with that one. Just like the writers could have tried harder with season three. 